Kia ora, I'm Jeremy and this is Golden Love on Breaking It Down. We were destined, oh. The interpretation that people give the song is down to the vibe that the music creates. Most people when they hear the song they think this is a romantic, beautiful song. Some people think this is a tragic, a tragically beautiful song, this is a breakup song. Um, I had one person come up to me and say, oh, it's so amazing you captured the moment that I said goodbye to my grandparent in hospital. My dad thinks it's about a Labrador that I walked for, for like four years and he, and he died. <laughs> um, he still thinks it's that, you know, golden love. <laughs> <laughs> the lyrics speak for themselves in a lot of ways, you know. We rest as one soul, just one last night here, remembering what we gave up, this golden love. Clearly about Labradors. <laughs> Lying in a field, surrounded by tennis balls. What I like to do is I don't really force the creative process. I like to put myself in situations where an idea can come to me, that might mean I'm just doing the dishes or having a shower or just going about my day, walking down the street. But it's it's about being being open and leaving yourself open so I won't have any music on, I'll have silence in the room and all that kind of stuff. But for Golden Love, that was sort of interesting because it was one of these situations where I gave myself a songwriting task. Golden Love actually came about just because I was really poor and I couldn't afford Christmas presents for my family and so I wrote a couple of like really simple songs that hopefully my family would like. Golden Love was one of them. Have but it's the last yeah, they, there was no intention. I think that, that sometimes having no intention for songs is the best way to go about writing them. And so that's why I do give myself these songwriting tasks now and then. It's like, oh, I'm gonna write my friend a, a song and give it to them as a, pre as a present. And then sometimes you write something really great and you're like, okay, I'm gonna have that back because I, I need to use it for my next album. The band didn't hear it for probably another six months. Um, and I played it, I was like, oh, I recorded these songs for my family for Christmas. And it was like, okay, let's throw this in there. And we recorded it in about two hours. <laughs> I was listening to a lot of Ben Harper. And Ben Harper's got these songs, he's got a few of them, um, where he, the, the vibe is, is kind of similar to, to Golden Love. So this is uh, one of Ben Harper's songs that I think it's Waiting on an Angel. And then he's got another one uh, that's real similar and I was like, Oh, I could do something like that. And I like mucked around and I was like, make it sound a bit different. I'll put a capo on it. It's like, gives it a slightly different vibe, change the rhythm a bit. But it's still that descending. Um, bass sort of guide to the, the guitar that then led to we rest as one soul. That's essentially where the song came from. I was like, oh, there's these beautiful, simple, pretty Ben Harper songs that really move me. I want to make a version of that. And sometimes that can be a real cool song inspiration is thinking of how can you can put your spin on the way someone else has written a song and constructed it. So the demo's made of like three guitar parts. It's like one's just going, And the other one's me going. Because I just, I was, I was just learning guitar. <laughs> so there's, there's just this random stuff on there. I couldn't pick guitar very well, so it's sort of a weird thing. And then when we recorded it with the band, Simon's obviously was a real guitar player. So what happened was I pieced together the guitar and I just looped that, looped that section twice. And then I kept it going on my garage band and I tried to sing melodies over it and came up with the melody and then I wrote the lyrics for it based on stuff that was going on in my life at the time. I suppose that the first verse sort of sets, for me it sets a bit of a scene. 
second verse gives a bit of context. A little bit of context. Our paths have crossed us. But it's the last time I'll have you. When we're old, we'll, we'll look on this golden love. And again, for me, this is pretty, like, that's pretty straightforward in my mind. So chorus, yeah. We were destined, underdone, meet me Thursday for golden love. It's pretty, it's pretty straight up. We were destined, oh. Done. Oh, oh, would you meet me Thursday for? Oh, Thursday, Thursday comes into it because it's it's such a boring day. It's this understated day. It's like meet me Thursday. It's like you'd only actually meet up with me on a Thursday if you gave a shit. You know, otherwise it's like okay, I'm only free on the weekend. Sorry. It's gonna to have to be Saturday. No, I'm like, meet me Thursday because you care that you'll come out on a Thursday and meet up. <laughs> so well thought out. <laughs> oh, meet me Tuesday for. This doesn't, it doesn't work. Meet me Friday, meet me Saturday, meet me Sunday, Sunday maybe. But Sunday's just, what are we, what are we gonna have? We're gonna go to church. It's like got too many connotations. Thursday is just a boring day that rolls sweetly within the, the lyrics of the song. We were destined. This, the recording process was super quick because we just, everyone loved the demo. So we just replicated the demo almost entirely. Simon put his own spin on the guitar. We had all the same backing vocals. Um, the only thing that there was a bone of contention over was the harmonica solo. And so, the next week, we actually commissioned a string section. I can, I can even play it to you. Like, no one's ever heard this. It's apart from who, people involved in the recording. It's like all kind of Celtic it becomes, you know? The thing is, it changed the vibe so much. It, all, all of a sudden, it became a bit less intimate with the string section. It became quite grand. It took away the sincerity of the message for me. It was purely about what suits that story within the, that song. And I think I probably put my foot down and said, I don't want these strings in there. So the song was released as a single. It was the fifth single from the, that, the Brave Don't Run. It was very much a soft release. I think the label just wanted to put it out and just to see if it would fit on like adult contemporary radio, you know, classic hits, more FM, that kind of vibes. Near the end of the band's existence, it began to be associated with weddings. And I think that the music video had something to do with this because the A&R guy for no, Warner in, in, all, in New Zealand, he was like, I have footage of my parents' wedding. We've got heaps of it. And we just put it on YouTube. It wasn't a for TV music video. But yeah, there was a, this, there's a music video which is <laughs> literally made by our label. Do us justice, this golden love. Then, in about 2016, the song got included in Korea's Home and Away. It's a TV show called Uncontrollably Fond. And all of a sudden, overnight, there were these lyric videos and homemade videos popping up on YouTube. People were searching for it on Spotify and we were probably one of the top played artists in Korea for like a week. Now it's by far the most played Midnight Youth song and we could probably tour Korea <laughs> if we were a real band now. I kind of like the idea that people have different interpretations and, I, and it's been a part of a lot of really memorable special moments in people's lives, which is just insane, but it is the absolute pinnacle of what you can do as a songwriter. I'm so proud of that. I get chills thinking about that. 